Hey everybody, today Rado runs through claustrophobia and its expansion, claustrophobia de profundis. I don't actually have the box for the expansion anymore. I basically tossed the insert from the main and just threw everything in there to save shelf space because obviously I've got a shelf problem over there. I'm sorry, I'm going to stack stuff up on top. Although, I'm sorry, um, you're not watching this for shelf stacking tips. You're watching this for claustrophobia to learn how this game plays and if it's interesting for you. And it's expansion. So I'm going to be covering both of these things in this run through today. Keeping this over here for quick reference. Nice icon reference on the back page. You're running through both of these today. And in case you're just curious about claustrophobia, I'll point out when I'm using expansion stuff so you'll know that you don't get that you like you don't get these awesome hellhounds in the unless you get the expansion they are not part of the base game so basically hopefully this video will work for people who are curious about the base game and the expansion so let's go now this game is it's obviously it's a two player dungeon crawl where one player controls all the heroes and the other player controls all the demons all the hell spawn that are out for trouble the game the base game comes with six adventures which are all awesome and all very replayable. I'll talk about more that about more in the. Uh, I'll talk more about that in the final thoughts. The expansion. One of the cool things it adds is twelve new. So that means you got eighteen. I think it's twelve. I think it's twelve. Is it? I haven't played them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 11, no, I think it was 12. All right, I'd probably just count. One, two, three, hunt begins. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. You see, there's a lot of variety in all these things. I mean, look at this one. It, it, it makes like a huge dungeon with a danger zone and an exit zone or this crazy, this one called the maze. I mean, heroes get lost in there forever. But, um, so, so it's very, very interesting. Uh, there's tons and tons of variety, but even the base game, the six adventures that come with the base game, they're very replayable. We've played some of them a few times and you know enjoy them every single time. So don't worry if you don't get the expansion, you'll still get a lot of value in the base game. Plus, even if you don't get the expansion, there are several, there, there's, a, there's a pack of new adventures you can download that have been released by the publisher. So even with the base game, you get a lot of adventure. But today, I'm gonna be playing through this expansion one called The Hunts of Foot. And the reason I chose this one is because it will give me the opportunity to show some of the new expansion content, specifically the new lady adventurers, the, what are they called, the Sicaria. There's two of them, this, this scimitar lady and the tough red-headed broadsword lady. And by the way, these are not like sexy chainmail bikini adventure ladies. These are like proper adventure ladies. They're, they're kind of like a cross between a rogue and a fighter. They're super tough. They have a lot of unique abilities. And so I uh, basically I chose this one because it's a really cool adventure. We really like it and it has the ladies in it too. So anyway, we're going to be playing the hunts afoot. And now this is all the stuff that's about the setup. The, the core game is really simple, really elegant. There's only a few rules, but then every adventure adds some new interesting rules. So the new rules in this adventure, well, let's tell you about the story of this adventure. <clears throat> the heroes, the humans were up top making a super weapon to basically destroy the demon threat once and for all. But the demon snuck into town late at night, as you can see, oops, stole, they wrapped everybody this little treasure chest, stole three parts of the super weapon, and then they ran back into the cavern and are trying to escape with them. So there's one there, one there, and one there. Five heroes suited up for super fast, gave chase, and when they came into the cavern, there was a big cave in. Oh no! And basically they've all been stunned and discombobulated for a second. And so what that means is, because they're stunned, normally the first thing that happens in every adventure is the heroes get to roll their dice and do what is called their initiative phase by assigning dice to different characters. But because they're all stunned, every one of them has been set with a six, which means low attack, low movement, high defense. So they're all set to six, and we skip their action phase. That's another, normally the heroes get to go first. This adventure, that's why I like it, as I always have to play the demons, this adventure, the demon gets to go first. So we're skipping the hero's turn. They're all stunned, and I'm going to try and let my little guys here escape. Let's run, guys. So let's begin with what's called the, you know, the demon phase, the threat the, on the demon's turn, the first thing we do is the threat phase. So I have three dice I get to roll. A one, uh, looks like a five, I think, and a four. A one, four, and a five. Now, I can assign these. <coughs> <coughs> 
Kingsburg style to all these different actions, and I can do different actions. Like, if I had a sum total of 12, I have a sum total of 10 here, but I had 12, I could set a trap. With this 10, I could do resistance is futile, which means until the beginning of my next turn, um, none of the heroes are elusive, and my troglodytes are elusive, so I can like change the stats of people. I could burrow, which means I could spawn monsters anywhere, uh, which I can't afford, because I only have 10. So I can't do those. Taste of blood, uh, I, I could do that one, but I'm, I'm on the defense. I want my little guys to run away. I don't know if I necessarily want to fight right now. This one, if I put a, a die here that's at least three, I could draw an event card, which might be, I don't know, a crisis of faith for the healer, or critical hits, or suicide attacks, all kinds of stuff. If I want to have a special card, I could play as a surprise. <clears throat> These three things, Supernatural Speed, They Are Legion, and Sharpened Claws, are three ways that I can pump up my little wussy troglodytes, who are the super wussy. They just have one hit point. They only get to do one combat die. So they're, they're, they're nice looking. Hello, I'm a tough guy. But they are, they are wusses. So I could pump them up. I have to use two dice for any of these things. I can make them faster. I can make them tougher to kill. And also, when they do die, I get, I get more mana. I get threat points. Or I can make them frantic, which means they get to attack more often. Because <coughs> I give them sharpened claws. Finally, I can do sounds from the deep, which means for every die I put here, I get threat points. And I can save these up so I can summon big, tough creatures and do other things. Or I can put anything here, and that's basically banking a die, so on the next turn, I'll get an extra die. So I got a 1, 4, and a 5. I do want my guys to run, run, run like the wind. So I think I'm going to give them supernatural speed. Two dice with odd scores. Hey, well, you know, I have a 1 and a 5, so I'll give them supernatural speed. Now, for this other thing, I could, I said, let's, let's get a dark destiny. I want to have a card. So I get to draw, oops, that was a 4. It's higher than a 3, so I get to draw a card, and my card is... Demonic Possession. Very cool. I can play this during my threat phase and take control of one of the heroes and have him for one turn attack his buddies. Very cool. That'll come in handy. In fact, I could even do that right now. Can I do that right now? Condemned Warrior of your choice immediately attacks another human warrior on the same tile. Uh, he cannot use his grenade or the bodyguard talent. Wow. That's really interesting. I could actually start them fighting right now and slow them down a little bit. Now, nobody's going to, you know, none of these guys are going to kill each other, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, see, I don't know. They might split up. I don't know what they're going to do. This might be a good idea to have them fight right now. But see, and in fact, oh, this is interesting. If I have them fight each other, and instead of making my little guys run faster, I could put them right here, and that would give me four threat points, and I could summon a big tough guy, and ooh, let's do that. That's going to be more fun. All right, so first thing I did is I got an event die, which I'm going to use, and then I got some threat points. For every die I put there, um, and they have to be all odds or all evens. They're all odds. So every die I put there, I get four threat. Or I get two threats. So I've got four threat in total. All right. <clears throat> now before my threat phase is over, I am going to spend some of this threat to summon a creature. I'm going to spend three of it to summon a hellhound. This is new. Hellhounds aren't in the base. In the base game, I can summon more troglodytes, which cost one threat. They're very weak. And I can summon the big demon guy. I mean, look at this guy. He's super, super cool. Super tough. How? Um, and I could summon him. He would cost five threat. Now I don't have five threat. I only have four, so I can't quite summon him. But in this adventure, when I do summon him, he can either come in as the demon of combat or the underground hunter. And they have very different. The underground hunter, he basically isn't that tough. But if he's fight, he's fast, and if he fights wounded guys, he gets a lot of extra combat power. The demon of combat, he's just a tough guy. And in this adventure, he can also cause cave-ins to slow down the heroes. That's a special thing in this adventure alone. But I'm not going to summon him right now. I'm going to summon in this hellhound. So I could put him here, here, or here. When I summon creatures, they have to come in from off of the board. I can't just put them in any old room. They have to come in from an entrance to the board, unless I'm using burrowing monsters, in which case they can come in any place. So I'll have this guy come in over here. So he's been summoned. Now, hellhounds are special. They are different. If you remember how I was talking about the heroes all have a die assigned to them? My troglodytes and demons don't do that but my hellhounds do get a die assigned to them. So when he got summoned, I got to assign a one, two, three, four, five, or six to him. And now if I assign a one or a two, he gets three combat dice, four defense. He's a tough, tough son of a gun. If I give him a three or four, he can move really far, which I don't need. He's not gonna move very far right now. And he becomes elusive and frantic, which means he can get away, he can attack multiple times, but he only gets to roll one die. I don't think that's useful. The other one, I could give him, he's slow, 
but he only needs to move one space. He can only roll one die to attack, but he's tough to kill and he's impressive. What impressive means is he can hold people. Um, you know, normally, you know, if he were to come in here and the guy said, oh, I don't really want to fight you, they could, just, they could just leave, they could run away. But if he's impressive, he holds them in the room. Unless, of course, they're elusive. Elusive means they could escape. And um, as it turns out, in this game, the thieves are elusive, and the Sicaria in this game has the quickness ability, so she's elusive also. So if I send him here as an impressive, he would be able to hold the cleric and the brute. They would not be able to escape until he is dead, and he'd be tough to kill. So do I, And remember, I want these guys to escape as far as they can. So I think I am. I'm going to send him in there as an impressive, which means I'll give him, let's say, a five. So he's tough to kill, he's impressive. And I've got one more. I could summon another troglodyte. What the heck, I'm going to do it. I'm all in, balls to the wall. I'm going to pay one more and summon another troglodyte. I'll put him over here with these two guys. Right. So I'm done summoning creatures. But before, I mean, so I can do that on my threat phase. I can summon as much as I can afford. I've paid all, everything I've got, I've summoned. And now, before I'm going to be done, I am going to use my demonic possession. I'm going to play this, play this during the threat phase, before I move on to my action phase, and I can force one of the heroes to attack each other. <laughs> so, my choice, this gets discarded. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, unfortunately, remember they're all stunned, so none of them can really hit very hard, though. Oh, that's crappy. Oh, maybe, I'm gonna, maybe I'll save this, actually. Because, yes, yeah, it stands right now. They all have high defense and low attack. So this is a terrible time to play Demonic Possession. I'm going to hold on to that. But you know what? I am still going to go for the super attack. I'm going I'm to swarm them while they're stunned. Which means they have high defense, but well, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to save this till later. But I've summoned everybody. And now I can move on to my action phase. And during my action phase, individually, I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I've got eight characters. I can move each one of them, and I can make each one of them attack in, my, in either order. First, they can move and then attack, or they can attack and then move. Now, uh, but you can't interrupt one or the other. You can't like move a little ways, attack, and then keep moving. You know, that kind of thing. It's all one or all the other. So for starters, let's have my football carriers, the guys who are carrying the pieces of the, uh, the, of the super weapon, let's have them try to escape. By the way, that's another rule. Normally, my monsters cannot explore. They cannot move into new areas like this. But in this adventure, they can because they're exploring too. Normally the monsters don't explore, but in this game they're exploring. So I'm going to have this guy make a run for it. He's going to... He's, um, my troglodytes have one movement, so that means he gets to move one space, and he's going to move here. So let's see what he finds. Ah, very nice. A foggy tunnel. <clears throat> and the foggy tunnel... This is a new one. This is in the expansion. So he comes in here. And anybody, hero or monster, in this zone, no matter what, has a defense of six. So because of all the fog, they're very tough to kill. You have to roll a six to hurt them. So he has moved, and he could attack, but he's not going to attack anybody, so he's done. Um, now let's have this guy run away. He's going to run here, and oh, okay. There's nothing special. This is a normal, there's nothing fancy about this, except it's three-way. Now... I drew it because I was exploring, which means my opponent gets to place it. So Jen could place it like this, like this, or like this. I think she'll place it like this, really because she's being aware of trying to encroach too much into my... But, you know, this, these tiles are gigantic. They're almost the size of my head, so they take gobble up a lot of table space. So Jen's going to put it like this, and here he comes. He had one movement. He is done. He cannot move any further. Now, this is my last guy. He's going to explore over here. And, oh, oh no, that's terrible. He found a bend, and it's also, it's a tight squeeze. So what that means is, Jen gets to choose how she wants to put it. Now, she could put it like this, you know, this is, a, this is nothing, and then the tunnel goes off this way. She's not going to do that. She's going to put it like this. So my little football carrier just ran into a dead end. He's trapped. He, ha he cannot escape. These other guys are going to run for it, but this guy's got nowhere to go because that was Jen's choice. Now, also, interestingly, this is a tight squeeze. Normally, you can have, uh, there can be up to three demons and three heroes in every tile. In this one, though, there can only be one demon and one hero. So at least, if they want to come for him, they'll have to squeeze in here to get him. They can't come en masse. This room is special. This symbol means I think you can have up to five heroes and five monsters. This is a big rumble room in here. Okay, so my three guys have run, and now uh, my other guys, everybody else, is going to turn 
and it's gonna bring it. We're gonna have a big battle royal out. I gotta do them one at a time. Let's have this guy come in first. Hello! And what? 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 Here. Doesn't look good for my little guy here, does it? No, it does not. Arr. Okay, now, he's moved, and now he gets to attack. And so, attacking, um, I gotta choose. Who's he gonna attack? Now remember, because all these guys have high defense, I think he'll attack one of the blades, the thief guys, because their defense is only five, whereas everybody else is a six. So let's say he's gonna attack Blondie, the blonde thief, who has a defense of five. So that means he's gotta roll a five or a six. He has one combat, that means he gets to roll one die. So come on, little guy, roll a five or a six. Just roll a five. I am visualizing a five. Here we go. Or six, I'll take that, so boom. Blondie over here, hello, I jump over here and hit you from the back. Blondie gets bitten in the ass and takes one point of damage. Now, how this damage gets applied is Jen's choice because this is her character. You can see there are six spots here that can be, can be affected by whatever die Jen wants. As soon as she puts one of these in here though, that, this, this line, assigning a four to this guy would be suicide because if Jen ever assigned a four to him, he would basically be stunned and he wouldn't be able to do anything. He'd literally be defenseless. So the more of these hits they take, the harder it is for them to defend themselves. But anyway, so he's tough right now. I think Jen's gonna actually put it in the six because Jen is all offense. She's not gonna want to ever put it. Now, since he put it in here, he doesn't immediately get stunned. But in the future, if Jen ever puts a six in here, which she won't do if she can avoid it, he would be stunned. All right, so he's taken one point of damage. So now this little guy is done. Now, let's have this little guy move in, and what do you think he's gonna do? He is also gonna try and hit the thief. All right, come on, roll a five or six. And it's a three, that's a miss. This guy comes in and tries to bite him. Five or six. Terrible, all right. Last little guy comes in with his roll of a five or a six. And a five, hooray! So, or, well, Boo, if you're rooting for the heroes, but you're rooting for the villains, aren't you? Come on, you know you are. So now Jen's got to assign another point of damage to this guy. Now this guy's taken a third of his life is gone. So now it's a little bit trickier. Because again, Jen's effectively blocking off one of his avenues. Let's see, now the thieves, they're unique in that they can move, you know, like this brute, his maximum speed is only ever one, but the thieves can go two. And since these guys are running, Jen wants her thieves to be able to move fast. So she's not gonna block the four or the five, because that would get rid of the speed. So she's gonna block one of these. I think she'll block two and three are the exact same stats, so she'll block two. Uh, and she'll keep one available because one is a better combat. So, and now, Bum, 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 bum. He had, remember I gave him one movement so he can move one, and I gave him one attack. So he also gets to roll a die. So he's also trying to roll a five or a six so we can work this little guy even more. Let's go for it. A six, oh my gosh, awesome. One more point of damage, I guess Jen will block this other one. So now he's got fast movement and he's got high attack. All right, that was it. My turn is over. And this, as you can see, is a very, very, crowded room. But I think Jen is going to return the favor now because I'm done. I have activated, I've moved and activated and all my guys, this guy is trapped. This guy's going to keep running and this guy's going to keep running. And Jen on her turn is going to bring the pain to me. Okay. So let's go to her turn. First thing that happens on Jen's turn is she takes all her dice, rolls them just like I did at the beginning of my turn. And now she has to assign these to her heroes any way she wants. Now, she does not want to give this guy a two, a three, or a six. So she's not going to give, so both of those, that two and three are going to go somewhere else. The ones, oh, oh. Now interestingly, this, the cleric, at the beginning of the game, Jen got to choose from several different spells she could give him. She gave him the Aura of Healing, which if Jen assigns a four to him, he could cast. At the beginning of his activation, the Redeemer can heal a line, you know, rem you know remove a damage from a, uh, you know, his choice from the Condemned Warriors positioned on the same tile, remove the token from the relevant square damage. So I think Jen is going to put the four so that the Cleric can heal some of this damage. So now we've got a couple of ones. Ones are very, very high. They're the highest damage. I think she's gonna give one of the ones to the brute. So he can do, he can roll four dice in combat. I think she'll give the other one. Oh, no, 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 no. That would leave a two and a three, which means she'd have to give the two or the three to this blade. So she's gonna give the other one to this blade so that he is not stunned. 
All right, and so that means she's got the two and the three still. She's gonna give this three to this blade because that gives him two movement and hopefully he can start running and start chasing after the trogs, which means that leaves this two for the Scaria, which means she has high defense and a decent attack. So actually that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Um, so, but you know, it'd be nice to give her some movement because she can move really far too because she's kind of a half thief, half fighter. All right, so Jan has done her initiative phase and now, she, just like on my turn, Hello, 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 hello. She can have each of her characters in, or in any order she wants, move and then attack or attack and then move. And now this is, an, here's the interesting thing. Normally, now you, you might think Jen said, well, hey, let's have, the, let's have this thief run away because he's hurt. And, um, you know, let's just any, you know, he can move. Let's just, uh, let's have him escape. There are very specific rules about how characters move or what's called the blocking rules. Here's how they work. Um, although let's actually use an example, a simpler example over here. Um, let's just make up a new example. In this room, there's a brute, one of Jen's gu good guys versus one of my little bad guys. If the number of heroes and the number of, of demons matches, that means nobody can leave. Because this, if this guy wanted to leave, he'd say, uh-uh, uh-uh, because they can block. Now, if there were two heroes, now the heroes out, outnumber the uh, demons, and so this guy can say, okay, well, since we outnumber you, I will leave. But then the next one says, oh, I want to leave too, but nope, you can't anymore because you'd no longer outnumber. So this person basically held off the demon so this guy could escape. It's a very cool, very simple little system. And so what it means, since there's five demons and five heroes in this room, nobody can escape until the numbers change. Now there's a couple of exceptions to that rule. The elusive power, which the thieves and the girl have, no, means they can break the blocking rule. If you're elusive, you can leave just like normal. Doesn't matter, you, don't, you can't be blocked, so you can sneak out because you're elusive. However, you may recall the Hellhound was given the impressive ability. And the impressive ability cancels out the elusiveness. So these three, you know, they're no longer elusive. So they are held by the blocking rule. Also, impressive means even if all these monsters were here and there was just this one impressive monster by himself, because he's impressive, these characters could not leave. These ones could because they're elusive, but the, anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's five on five, it's a big rumble. And before Jen can leave this room, she's gonna have to clear the way. Now she wants these thieves to chase, because remember, um, one of them can move two spaces. So he could actually catch up, catch up to this guy before he escapes. So Jen is gonna want this guy, which one was it? Yeah, Brownie. Jen's gonna want this guy to, to either attack and then move, or better off, move and then attack and, and capture him. But he can't leave yet. So Jen's got to, um, first of all, attack and lower the numbers. Of, and that's gonna be easy. So Jen's gonna start with the big guy. Big guy's gonna go first. Remember, because she gave him a one, he has four combat. He is gonna get to roll four dice. Ouch! Four dice. He has to declare who he's attacking. He can either declare the troglodytes as a whole, as one big group, and basically his, he attacks all of them, or he can attack my hellhound. He's going to attack the troglodytes and just try to wipe them all out because each of them has one hit point and their defense is three. So if he rolls a three, four, five, or six, for every three, four, five, or six he rolls, he will kill a troglodyte. He could kill all four of them in one hit. Let's see what happens. Miss, miss, hit, hit. So he killed two of the troglodytes and they're dead. So now the tide has turned. He has attacked, and now he could move. Now he can't leave because there's still an impressive character and he is not elusive. So he's done, there's nothing more he can do. He's done. Now, however, my elu or Jen's elusive characters can now leave. They can leave the room because they're no longer outnumbered. So Jen is now gonna have this guy, he's not gonna fight, he's gonna leave, because he's elusive, so he, he uh, you know, his elusiveness counteracts the impressiveness. There's more heroes than villains, so he's gonna leave. He has two movements, so he goes one, two. He says, hello, where are you going? And he is gonna attack. Now, he has a blunderbuss, which means he could have actually, he only had to move one space, and he could have shot from there. But since I gave him the two speed, he might as well move all the way up here, just in case he misses, just in case. So, he's moved up. And the blunderbuss also gives him plus one on combat. So he, let's see, he's at three, right? So he has 
<gasps> Wait, oh, oh no. Oh shoot, crap. I needed to give him a four or a five. He has a three, he only has one movement. So he has only moved this far. He could only move one space. But because he has the blunderbuss, he can still shoot from a distance. So he moved one, and now, using the blunderbuss, he can attack an adjacent tile, he gets plus one. So where was he again? He has two combat plus one, he gets to roll three dice. And again, all he's gotta do is roll a single three, and that guy is dead. And he rolled a five, a three, and a two. So that was two hits. Oh no! He did not escape. And boom, this is dropped, waiting to be picked up. Special rules for how to pick up and all that stuff. Picking up a thing replaces your attack phase. It's either your move phase or your attack phase, I'll have to look. But anyway, that can be picked up later. So this guy is done, and this guy is done. Jen's still got three more moves. Okay, now, the girl and the other thief, they can still leave because they're elusive. But you know what, if, if they just leave, they're, well actually I guess they could leave, track down the other guys, and then just leave the healer and the brute to, um, to, to fight these guys. That might not be bad. Let's see. Well, now she gets to roll three, right? Yeah, she's got three combat dice. Let's have her attack first and try to take out the other two trogs before she leaves. So she's gonna roll three dice because again, she has a two, that's three combat. She rolls three dice, trying to beat threes. A three, a three, and a two. So this is a fail, but these were two successes. So both of these guys are dead. Not looking good for our team. All right, so she has attacked and now she's gonna move, and because she's elusive, she can leave. She has one movement, so she is gonna move over here and give chase to this guy. Now the interesting thing is, this is, a, this is a flooded tile. Even if she had two movement, the flooded means she could only move one into it and she would have wasted her other movement. But next turn, she'll be able to keep chasing him. And this guy's trapped. All right, so she's done. She's attacked, she's moved. Jen's still got three more guys. Um, and one hellhound to kill who has a defense of five. So, no, two more guys. Let's have them start fighting now. Um, the cleric who has one attack, he's got to roll a five or a six to hurt the hellhound. And he rolled a five. Wow, just like that. Took a point of damage for the hellhound. The hellhound has three hit points, has taken one. And now he's done his uh, attack. He cannot move because there is an impressive creature. So he's done. And now we're done down to the last thief. That was Blondie who got worked over so bad. He's got three combat dice because he got a one. So remember, he's got to roll fives or sixes. He rolled four, a four, and a one. A whiff. Three misses. Uh, he must have been shaken by being so beaten up. And by, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait. Okay, but before Jen's turn is over, I totally forgot about this. Jen got the four. So, um, at the beginning of the activation, the Redeemer can heal a line. So the Redeemer used that four to heal. I guess it'll heal the two, let's say. So now he's a little bit better, but even still, he totally missed. Now that was Jen's turn. She did her initiative and assigned a bunch of numbers to everybody, and then she activated them one at a time, gave chase. And now it's my turn again. So at the beginning of my turn, uh, let's see, my dog loses his die. I get three dice I get to roll. Let's see what I get. A three, a one, and a five. Now, remember, I should have let my little guys run faster. I should have let them run faster because one guy's, although this guy would have been trapped anyway, but this guy could have been farther away. So I could let them move faster again. I give, but this guy, he's not going anywhere. He's trapped. And it's gonna take her one whole turn just to move out. So I don't think I'm gonna give them speed. He is gonna run. What do I wanna do? Now, my dog, when I first summoned him, this is an expansion feature, I, gave to give him a, I got to give him a dice for free. That free die is gone. If I want my dog to do anything else from now on, I have to assign one of my dice to him, which means I can't assign it on the board of destiny. If I don't, he will have zero movement, zero combat, and four defense. So he'll still be tough. He'll be tough to kill, he can but he will lose his impressive trait, and he'll just kind of hide in a corner and, and protect himself. So I gotta let him keep fighting. It'd be a waste not to. So I think, I can give him the one, the three, or the five. The three means he could run away. Ah, because he'd be elusive and he could get out of that room. Normally, right now, he can't leave because he is outnumbered. Oh, but remember, this guy is impressive. So even um, if he were given elusive, he'd still be outnumbered, so he can't escape. So there's no reason to give him that. I think I'm gonna give him the one, which will give him three attack. He is gonna fight. If he can, he's gonna all but wipe out this thief, maybe. 
And let's see, so that means God gives me two more dice I could, I could play with. Maybe now is a good time to have the heroes fight amongst themselves because they've got, let's see, oh yeah, I'm going to have the brute who has four combat dice. The brute is going to attack this blade. Oh, and maybe kill, oh boy, I'm so excited. All right, so I'm going to play that. The, the, the dog is going to be, I'm going to hit back hard, and I've got two more dice. What am I going to do? It's an odd and an even, so I can't put them both on sounds of the deep, because they have to both be odd or both be even. I can put them both here so I get two dice. I think I want another, I think I'm going to put a three over here, because I want another card. And I'm going to put a five. This would give me some more threat points so I could summon more later. Or I could put it over here so I get another die for later. Another die for next turn, or two more threat points. Two more threat points. All righty. So I'm taking two more threat points. I'm getting to draw another card. Defect. Play during the... Oh, I can play this right now. The human player must discard an object of their choice, which one of the warriors is equipped. So the warriors have very limited... Both of the thieves have a blunderbuss, which lets them shoot from a distance. The, um, oh, but it's, this is only for items, right? So I can't make the uh, cleric lose his spells. An object card. Right. So the clerics, those are, let's see, and these are skills. So I could make one of the thieves lose his blunderbuss, or I could make the brute lose his necklace of ears, which is basically a thing that scares away my troglodytes. So still, that's pretty good. I mean, actually, since this guy's running, I think, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, so it's my turn. Before my threat phase is over, and I've got, I could summon two troglodytes now. But I'm going to save my threat to try and summon something bigger later. Because this guy's going to survive for a while. This guy's going to have to come for him. And, um, well, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summon some more creatures later. So I'm saving my threat. My dog is going to fight, but in a little bit. But first, boom, defect gets played. Pick a character, and they lose their item. This guy, Brownie, he just lost his blunderbuss. It is removed from the game because it was defective. That, he got one shot off, and then it blew up in his face. And... Before my threat phase is over, demonic possession. The brute, the dumb guy, is going to get possessed. The condemned warrior can immediately attack another warrior in the same tile. So, this guy is going to attack this guy. Gets roll four dice. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, let's look at his defense. He's got a one. He's got a defense of three. The cleric has a defense of four. Yeah, so he's definitely going to attack here. He gets to roll four dice, or I get to roll four dice for him. And as long as I can roll three or better. Uh, okay. All of these. I want four fours. Four fours. Four fours. A one and a one. Well, two fours. All right, so that's two hits. So the brute did two points of damage to this guy. And so Jen has to decide how she wants to spread that around. She'll do the same. And now I guess she'll get run at one of his speeds. He's still got a speed, but now he's only got two places. He's close to death. But he still has his blunderbuss. But the other guy doesn't. All right. So I did that, I did that, and now it's my turn. Uh, my threat phase is over. My dog uh, is going to attack as well. My dog has a combat of three. Come on, this is it. I'm gonna finish this thief. Come on. Just need two fours. Right, or what's his defense? He, is it one? No, just need, just need two threes. That's all I need, two threes. A four and a six, boom, he's gone. Toast and toast. The condemned blade, Blondie, is no more. Out. As is the blunderbuss. It was very expensive for me. I spent a lot to do this, but I have now taken down 20% of the heroes. And they've lost a weapon. So things, and I've still got this guy, and this guy is impressive. So he, these people cannot give chase. Oh. <sighs> All right, so anyway, it's Jen's turn now. But you know what, I'm gonna stop right there. This has already been long. You can definitely have an idea of how, how exciting this game is, but it's Jen's turn. If you'd like to watch, see what she's gonna do, you can hit the button for extended play. Alternatively, you can go to final thoughts. Your choice, five, four, three, two, one.